So we'll touch upon few points uh, which came up. Uh, the first point, I think, uh, what uh, Professor Chanath Shah raised very interestingly was outside classroom versus inside classroom. That's one very interesting point. The second question which comes in is student-led or faculty-led? And of course, he talked about other stakeholders like staff, etc. Then the whole issue of uh, that within three months, students going for their, you know, uh, summer placements and then uh, that converts into final placements and the question of what value is added in the process. Now, in that case, what is the role of the school? If within three months, the students are actually placed. And hence, what will be the level of student engagement? And then the issue of long run versus short run. Is the faculty in, you know, taking a perspective which is more long run and whether the students are looking at the short run? I think these are very important questions. And uh, then the issue came, which is Dr. Rama talked about uh, and his survey. Students don't know what they don't know. I think if we do a survey, my take is, uh, Dr. Rama, you can do a similar survey with the faculty also. Okay, whether the faculty don't know what they don't know. And uh, the issue of outside classroom versus inside classroom, which is outside academic and inside academic. So outside and inside, there is a distinction within the institution. That's how uh, it came out. And uh, then, of course, Dr. Anger talked about Bajaj, which is student runs every activity, whether it is admission, whether it is the conference, whether it is the placement, and you know you get one lakh twenty thousand, you know, uh, applications for the one twenty seats. Now, this, there lies the dilemma. The dilemma is, you know, if we take the best. You know, there was a joke that we used to do in SPGMR that we take the, take the students and put them in Khandala for the next two years, they will be still be placed. Okay. So if you take the best, because the company's KRA is essentially measured, the HR's KRA is best me measured based on whether they have been to the top institution or not. Now, but the question is, and there is Tarun, I can see, is sitting over there. And he graduated in 1996 from SPJMR. Then there is Rahul, I think, who is what Cat King, and a graduate of 2009. Question is that what happens to the institutions which don't start with an endowment and have to build themselves? And there's a question of value add that has to happen. And for example, we at Jackson say that we take the rough diamond and polish them into a you know, a polished diamond, okay, or a shining diamond, so to say. And I will take examples from two of the institutions, one SPJMR, and which I have, you know, been associated with for quite some time, and the other at what we are trying to do at Jackson. And some of the benchmark institutions globally, Stanford came up, and uh, one of the institutions we also benchmarked at SPGMR was Babson, as, as a matter of fact. And there are a few questions that we asked. Should there be a distinction between curricular and non-curricular? That is the first question. Number two, if you are talking about MBA, Master in Business Administration, where do we teach administration? How is administration learned by the graduates of a B school or so-called MBA institution. And what becomes more important, and that has become more relevant today when we are talking about 100-year life, which means multiple careers. The important question is, how do we create an agenda for learning to learn? That is the first thing, which is continuous learning. Number two, how do we create an agenda of self-awareness and self-development? 
at an early stage of one's career. Number three, how do we incul inculcate values in an individual? Are these going to be curricular or are these going to be outside the curricular? And one of the decisions that we took and uh, led Dr. Manesh Srikant uh, led that initiative saying that all this has to be curricular intervention within the institution, nothing can be extracurricular. And there was a program which was there, which was by the way, more than 8% of the total credit, 5 credit out of 60 credits, which is 10 out of 120 if we take in some other institutions, which was a course called ADMAP, Assessment and Development of Managerial and Administrative Potential. This was the course which was there at SPJMR. And each of the activities were run through institutional committees. And more importantly, there was a clear objective of the program. I will come to what the objectives of the program were. Then when I, was, when I, met, when I joined Jacksom, this is a similar question that we asked. And when we did a survey of industry, you know, uh, executives, we did a survey of around 300 odd executives, structured questionnaire, number, you know, which we uh, administered. And then we did the round table across three cities, including Delhi, Delhi, Mumbai, and Bangalore with 43 CXOs. And one of the limitation was that getting things done is not probably a very strong strength of the graduates coming out of the business schools. What do you need to do? How do you make them effective in execution? You can have great plans and poor execution make a great plan go wayward. So a plan can be imperfect, but great execution make an imperfect plan look great. So we, based on that feedback, introduced a course which is known as effective execution. And I will give you what are the objectives of the course which is almost, almost similar because we benchmarked with Babson and SPGMR. There are three, four key objectives. Number one, understanding of the structure and processes in an, ad, in an administrative context. Number two, teamwork, particularly conflict resolution. Number three, which is becoming increasingly important as organizations are becoming flat, influencing without power. And number four, a very important objective was to being the process owner for a budget. Now, how do we administer that? And I will give you both the institutions. Uh, in, I have got similar kind of a, you know, I would say structure. Each of these committees, the student committees, are responsible for managing each of the activities of the institution. Now, for example, if you look at it, even the shortlisting of students, profile-based shortlisting of students at SPGMR is done by the student com committees. There was a challenge, you know, in change.org against me, there is a petition. How do you reject a 100 percentile and don't call them for an interview. But that's the call which is the student group has taken. At Jackson, we have a shoulder batch interview, which means that the students interview the incoming batch. Now, attendance being marked by the students in a class. Now, what does that inculcate? It inculcates the fact that as students, you take a decision which is unbiased. Ethics and values get inbuilt. If you are talking about inculcating those values, means we need to trust the students. The reason why Stanford has got no invigilation is the reason is the Stanford founder went to Harvard to make an endowment donation, which Harvard did not accept. And then it is said that, okay, fine. And because he wanted to do it in the memory of his uh, you know, uh, son, and then he said, 
if I get student in my university, then I need to trust them. I would trust my son. So it is not that it happened later on that the invigilation was taken off. From day one at Stanford, the value was trusting the students. Now, how do we inculcate those values? So those values need to come in the very beginning. It cannot be later. And as Clayton Christensen says that, you know, how do you measure your life? Now, if I'm marking an attendance as a student and my boyfriend or girlfriend is late in the class, I need to mark absent or, you know, to that particular student, which means values get inculcated at the very beginning. I think these are important factors which needs to be understood while designing a program that how do you make the student part of the whole system? It cannot be curricular and extracurricular, so to say. Number two, the entire work that the students do in their committees is also a process in which, you know, a self-development takes place. What we do is a, you know, a psychometric assessment of the students. And then each student know what their strengths and weaknesses are. And here in the committee, you observe in a team, in a context, how do you actually develop yourself? And the assessment is a 360 degree feedback. First is the self-assessment. In any co company, you do a self-assessment. Number two is a peer assessment within the committee. Number three is a peer assessment, which is by other committee members. And number four is the faculty. The challenge of doing this kind of a program is how do you figure out the assessment? How do you allow mentoring to happen? And the difference here is bet between coaching and mentoring. Coaching is directive. Mentoring is developmental. Let us you know, understand that when we are talking of a student-led institution, uh, the whole context is already there, and that's there in Bhagavad Gita. Who was the leader? Was it Lord Krishna or was it Arjuna? And if you appreciate the fact that as faculty, our role is that of Lord Krishna, we are not invisible, we are the Sarthi. Action is by the student. But the direction comes from the faculty. The mentoring comes from the faculty. So in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna also submits himself to Lord Krishna. Jatsreya shan nishtitanang bruhi tanme shishya stehang shadimang tang prapannam. Which is, he submits himself to his guru Lord Krishna and asks for his instructions and directions. I think that is the role of the faculty. The action has to be by the student. And the faculty has to play the role of Lord Krishna, invisible, but as Sarthi. Then you will have action by the student and mentoring by the faculty. I think if we take this kind of a model, the student-led institution will be a reality. And the conflict that happens between student and faculty or the so-called institutional administration can be best avoided. It has to be taken more as a curricular intervention and as a developmental intervention. I think each of the perspectives bring in a lot of food for thought. So thank you so much for being part of this uh, conversation. If there are any questions, because we are short of time, we can take during the tea time. Thank you so much.